when someone's sick, you can see it coming, you can plan for it, but when it's, uh, when it's sudden like this and, and senseless and, you know, undeserved, um, then it's, it's tougher to take. The year was only just beginning when a family of four was killed in a highway crash near Saskatoon on January 3rd. Catherine McKay was behind the wheel when she collided with the Van Der Voorst family's vehicle at the intersection of Highway 11 and Wanuskewin Road. Parents Jordan and Chanda Van Der Voorst died at the scene and their five-year-old daughter Cameron and two-year-old son McGuire later died in hospital. We have to live with a large hole in our hearts. She will have to live remembering what she did and the four lives that she took. No, no one will know what those two little ones would have accomplished as they grew up or what Jordan and Shanda would have done if they had lived a full life. McKay pleaded guilty to four counts of impaired driving causing death. She was sentenced to 10 years. And with that, on a frosty Sunday in January, the demolition of Saskatoon's traffic bridge drew a crowd to the River Valley. After standing for more than a century, the bridge closed in August of 2010 over safety concerns. It was slowly dismantled throughout the winter, making way for the construction of the replacement bridge to begin in the summer. They were making uh, a lot of money for CFL, and uh, I'm not going to get into the exact numbers or anything, but it was something that we just couldn't afford. New GM and head coach Chris Jones didn't waste any time redesigning the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Rider Nation was divided after he released fan favorites John Chick and Weston Dressler. Chick played six seasons with the Green and White. Dressler was with the team for eight years. Both played in the 2013 Grey Cup winning team. Chick played the 2016 season with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, while Weston Dressler went to the rival Winnipeg Blue Bombers. About six, seven shots before I got outside. I believe that there was more shots by the time I did get out. I was pretty close from that guy that was shooting. I ended up running and telling people to get out the doors. The world's attention turned to the tiny northern community of Laloche on January 22nd. Two shootings that day left four people dead and seven wounded. According to eyewitnesses, a shooter approached the high school and shots were fired outside and inside the building. 21-year-old Mary Jean Vier, an educational assistant at the community school, and 35-year-old Adam Wood, a teacher originally from Ontario, were both killed. 17-year-old Dane Fontaine and his 13-year-old brother Drayden were killed at a home nearby. But how much time does it take and how much people need to hurt themselves more in order for them to actually take action instead of just saying, oh, we'll do this in time. And in time, how many more lives are going to be lost? In time, and how many, how many homes are going to be shattered? How many schools are going to, how many students are going to have to, have to frighten in order for them to do, to take action? Candlelight vigils were held to help the residents deal with the loss and violence that rocked the small Dene community. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, along with Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale and Premier Brad Wall, traveled to Laloche to offer support. For years, I've been a part of sitting around with government agencies, pushing for resources, pushing for services, pushing for programs. And up until now, it has fallen on deaf ears. And now, all of a sudden, if Premier Wall is making a commitment to make these changes, I want to hold him to it. The teen charged in the shooting pleaded guilty to two counts of second-degree murder and two counts of first-degree murder, as well as to seven counts of attempted murder. There obviously was not, were not regular um, safety checks on, on these children. A court case in 2016 began in 2012 with the plight of two sisters. A four-year-old girl was rushed to hospital in cardiac arrest. She was malnourished, dehydrated and injured. She was taken off life support days later. Police removed the girl's two-year-old sister from the same home. She was also treated in the hospital for malnutrition, dehydration and injuries. She survived. Tammy and Kevin Goforth were charged with second-degree murder in the death of the four-year-old and unlawfully causing bodily harm to her younger sister. Both girls had been placed in the care of the Goforths by social workers. How social services um, attempted to deflect responsibility for how they uh, treated these children throughout their young, young lives. In February, Tammy Goforth was found guilty of second-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison with a chance of parole in 10 to 25 years. Her partner, Kevin Goforth, was found not guilty of second-degree murder, but guilty of manslaughter in the girl's death. The couple was also found guilty of causing bodily harm to the two-year-old sister, who was also in their care.
What's a buddy bench? It's where if you don't, if you can't find your best friends and you don't know where to go play, um, you sit on a buddy bench and somebody will come find you and they'll include you in your game. Oh, we got a lot of buddies. Okay, ready? Everybody in? One, two, three. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to have a buddy. Perhaps these two should have paid attention to the kids at Willow Grove when they came to our CBC studios. No one in Saskatchewan believes that. Why won't you just admit? Why won't you just admit that it was a mistake? Why won't you? Spirited verbal sparring highlighted the provincial leader's debate. Saskatchewan party leader Brad Wall and NDP leader Cam Broughton squared off in a one-hour exchange ahead of the provincial election. While both parties agreed to the debate format, Wall and Broughton frequently chose to speak at the same time. Some viewers were frustrated as they tried to hear the responses. I don't really like the limelight. I love our team to be in the limelight. I don't necessarily like to be in the limelight. And so it's a, it's a perfect situation for me to be in. It took a while, but for longtime head coach Lisa Tomitis, the Huskies basketball team victory never tasted sweeter. For the first time in history, a team from the University of Saskatchewan hoisted the bronze baby. The team defeated the Ryerson Rams to capture their first national title. Congratulations, ladies. Because something got done in the province of Saskatchewan tonight. And with that, it was a third majority government for Brad Wall and the Saskatchewan party. The win put Wall on the way to being one of the province's longest serving premiers. A dismal night for the NDP. Despite picking up a seat overall, their leader, Cam Broughton, didn't win his own constituency. A week later, Broughton stepped down from the party and Trent Wotherspoon stepped in as interim leader of the Saskatchewan NDP. Wotherspoon maintains he does not want the job full time. We asked the cops the other day, two days ago, to take our things out and they wouldn't let us. We all have what we have on our backs. Wildfires in Alberta's north brought terrifying scenes of destruction. On May 3rd, one wildfire moved into the city of Fort McMurray. About 88,000 people had to leave the area, making it one of the largest evacuations in Canadian history. The fire moved east and by mid-May it came into Saskatchewan near Laloche. We don't anticipate this uh, to impact Laloche in the same way. Uh, Laloche is nestled into a very large lake. Uh, there's old burns from last year and previous years that that uh, will remove a lot of the fuel that uh, that would be there otherwise. And uh, so we don't uh, we don't anticipate to have a direct fire threat. The smoke meant poor air quality in and around Laloche. Eventually, the weather did bring relief. By July, the fire was under control. Donations poured in from across Saskatchewan to those who lost everything in the fire, nicknamed the Beast. It's just part of the part of the Saskatchewan spirit. You're looking around, I mean, we're definitely not the only ones doing something this time around, and you know, I definitely want to be part of that and, and show Alberta that uh, that we're there for them as well. 2016 has meant more economic challenges in Saskatchewan. The budget was delivered on June 1st, and the provincial deficit was pegged at 434 million dollars. In a mid-year financial update, Saskatchewan's deficit projection more than doubled to $1 billion. The larger deficit means borrowing $500 million. The government says it will try to save $217 million before spring through a hiring freeze and added a tax increase is possible. Everybody knows uh, Gordy Howe. If, they, if you don't, you're not, you're not from Canada. <laughs> On June 10th, the world said goodbye to Mr. Hockey. Gordie Howe passed away at the age of 88. Howe was born in Floral, Saskatchewan, but grew up in Saskatoon. Fans gathered at his statue in front of the SaskTel Centre to pay their respects, leaving flowers and notes. Later that fall, Mr. Hockey's dying wish was fulfilled as his ashes, along with his wife Colleen's, were interred at his statue in Saskatoon. The Circle Drive South Bridge was also renamed the Gordie Howe Bridge in his honour. On the same weekend Howe died, country favourite Garth Brooks was playing six concerts in four days in Saskatoon. On that Friday night concert, Mr. Country paid tribute to Mr. Hockey as he took to the stage, wearing Gordy Howe's iconic number no. 9 Detroit Red Wings jersey. A shocking homicide unfolded on July 3rd. A six-week-old baby, Nicosis Cantry, was found injured in a Saskatoon home and later died. A 16-year-old girl was accused of killing the baby. She had walked away from open custody at a youth detention facility in Saskatoon the day before. The girls met her downtown. She like had nowhere to go. Okay, I raised my children with respect to help out people in need. The teen pleaded guilty to second-degree murder in the death of Cantry. 
Crown prosecutors are seeking an adult sentence. My, my daughter was sleeping in the next room when this all happened. She was sober, you know. She didn't even hear a thing that night. Can you tell me why? Maybe she held his mouth. I don't know. You know, where's the justice system at? When you're 16 years old, you should know better. I want the justice system changed. Although the summer began with incredibly dry weather, the rain was back in July. Estevan declared a state of emergency due to flash flooding. In two hours, 100 millimeters of rain fell in central Saskatchewan. The town of Arborfield had to be evacuated after a structure holding water back south of the town broke apart. My life, I don't know how else to put it, my life. Other than my kids and my husband. Actually, that's the most important. They're safe. That's what matters. In a word so far, devastating. Water continued to be an issue in July when a Husky Energy pipeline ruptured, leaking 225,000 litres of heavy oil and other chemicals. 40% of that went into the North Saskatchewan River near North Battleford. Water intakes from the river were shut down in North Battleford and later in Prince Albert as well. This shutdown affected thousands of residents and businesses as strict water restrictions were put into place. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for hearing what we said that you had to conserve water. Thank you to our business community for the same. Like I said earlier, some businesses have been shut right down. And they've been very, very good. They've been very understanding. A water line was put in, in North Battleford from Battleford to restore the city's water, and the city of Prince Albert was forced to rely on two temporary water lines, one drawing water from the South Saskatchewan River and another drawing from the Little Red River. A report was released later in the year. In Husky Energy's report, the pipeline broke due to ground movement in a one-time event. Tyson the Olympics dominated the news in August, and here in Saskatchewan, there was reason to celebrate. Humboldt-born Brianne Tyson Eaton received a bronze medal in the heptathlon in Rio. I would do anything if I could change uh, that day, but I can't. I can't live in the past. I beat myself up for the last month over my actions, and I can't change them, so all I can do is move forward. Former Deputy Premier and Saskatchewan Liquor and Gaming Authority Minister Don McMorris made headlines for the wrong reasons in August. He was pulled over in a government vehicle. His blood alcohol level was two and a half times the legal limit. McMorris pleaded guilty to having a blood alcohol level over 0 .08 and was fined. He also had his license suspended for a year. McMorris resigned from cabinet, but later would return as an independent MLA. This case caused a huge divide in the province. Colton Bushi, a 22-year-old Indigenous man, was shot and killed on a farm near Bigger on August 9th. Bushi and four of his friends pulled into Gerald Stanley's farm. According to Bushi's family, the group was going to ask for help with a flat tire. Police say a verbal exchange happened as Stanley tried to get the vehicle to leave. That's when a shot was fired, striking Colton Bushi in the vehicle. Stanley was arrested and charged with second-degree murder. The case sparked racial tensions. This is what I'm doing. I'm speaking up for that, speaking for generations to come. Colton Bushi's family raised questions about how RCMP handled the investigation. Bushi's mother recalled what unfolded the night RCMP officers told her that her son had been shot and killed. Gerald Stanley has pleaded not guilty to second-degree murder in Bushi's death. A preliminary hearing in the case is set to begin on January 16th. Well, I had very itchy hands. I had to get it checked out, but I didn't have a clue. For Mary Wernicke, the summer was a good one. The Neville Saskatchewan resident won $60 million on a $5 quick pick ticket she bought at a Swift Current drugstore. Okay, so I phoned her and she's like, I'm the $60 million winner. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Look, we, you won, yay. It's just, it was exciting. With more than 30 people in her immediate family, Wernicke says she's excited to see the impact her $60 million will have. Congratulations again, Mary. It was a blast coming up here and seeing everyone dressed up. Despite the losing record, the riders were only 1-8 going into this tilt. Fans were cherishing this final Labor Day Classic at Taylor Field. The game proved to be a classic with the clock winding down. Bomber kicker Justin Medlock kicked the game-winning field goal with two seconds to spare. The Bombers finally getting the better of the green and white for the first time since 2004. It's been anguish. It's been turmoil. 
three Maxine years, Goforth ladies. waited three years to learn the fate of the man accused of murdering her 21-year-old daughter, Kelly Goforth. Kelly's body was found in a dumpster in September of 2013. She had the biggest heart. She was always happy. She loved my kids. She loved kids. She loved to dance. Rochelle Bear went missing August 24th, 2013. The 23-year-old's body has not been found. The women's families gathered in court on September 19th, where Clayton Bo Eichler was charged with first-degree murder in both deaths. As the trial was about to begin, Eichler pleaded guilty to second-degree murder on both counts. You know, my baby was wrapped in garbage bags and a, and a hockey bag. And uh, I, I thought he had no soul. I know uh, there's divine intervention there because he apologized to me. And um, at least I'll be able to tell my baby, my grandson, Casey, that this man's sorry. It's been hard, hard on our family, you know. Gotta let it go. I didn't believe it. I didn't. I didn't believe him. If he really was sorry and he really was sympathetic toward me, he would tell me where my daughter is and he would let my family bring her home so we can start our healing. Clayton Eichler was sentenced to life in prison with no eligibility for parole for 20 years. If my life was threatened or if, if I felt my family's life was in danger, absolutely. Like it's, you know, you're not going to just uh, let them pull you over on the side of the road, shoot you and take your vehicle. Late September, farmers in West Central Saskatchewan were on edge. A worker from a local farm said three men carrying guns with masked faces, wearing sunglasses and driving a black SUV approached him as he drove along a rural road. At the sight of the firearms, the worker said he sped away from the scene without being harmed. This sparked an RCMP manhunt in the area. RCMP also received calls about multiple property thefts in the Rosetown area around the same time. And that's just the fact of life nowadays. I mean, that's the way it is. If they're going to keep doing this. That's we're going to have to protect ourselves and our property. Local area farmers took to openly carrying guns in their vehicles during harvest. This prompted SARM to ask for more RCMP officers in rural Saskatchewan. We have large areas to patrol, like I said, and and uh, that's what we have to deal with. And uh, we adjust our, our patrols and 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 try and and do the best with what we have. Um, I encourage people again not to take matters into their own hand because we don't want the Wild West. That's something that we're very concerned about. The three masked men were never found. Tammy Frank was pronounced dead and her sister Lacey was taken to hospital with serious injuries. Thunder Blanket fled the area, leading police on an extensive manhunt across western Canada. Before it was over, an RCMP officer was shot, a vehicle was hijacked at gunpoint, and the Trans-Canada Highway was closed for several hours. Sheldon Thunderblanket was found dead near Revelstoke. He was last seen heading down a steep embankment. Cause of death, according to BC's Independent Investigations Office, head trauma consistent with an impact against a rock. Municipal elections happened around the province in October, but none were more closely watched nor as highly contested as the battle for Saskatoon. When the dust settled, it was longtime city councillor Charlie Clark getting the nod from voters. Clark defeated incumbent Don Atchison, who had been seeking a fifth term. I'm going to ask the citizens for some patience because turning these cities and, and, uh, and, and making this change happen does take time. But uh, I think people just want to know we're also making progress and taking it seriously. We're very successful, so I'm very humbled by this, no question about that. It was a different story in the Queen City. Michael Fougere's victory was called shortly after polls closed. The landslide victory giving Fougere a second term as mayor of Regina. It's more than frustrating. It's more than the pit of my stomach anger, the pit of my soul um, pain. As a life giver of three Indigenous girls, I just cannot fathom um, having to write yet another proposal for help. We just got an alarming report from the RCMP that, you know, over the last month they've um, called, they've been called out 97 times, you know, to, for mental health related calls in the last month in our area here. So, you know, we still have a lot of work to do. 
The small communities of Larange, Stanley Mission, Deschambault Lake and Makwasagagan First Nation gather together to support the youth in the communities as calls for better funding for mental health resources echoed across the province this year. I look at my children and the age they are right now is 7 to 15 and this is the age group of these children that are, are committing suicide and, and doing all kinds of self-harm. That's not acceptable. It's not acceptable and it has to stop. We have to do something and this in, in some small way I hope if we can even change, change it for one person then it's all been worth it. Cards and letters flooded in from across the world with messages of hope and support. It was just awesome. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I never would have ever imagined being, you know, accepted that way. And uh, to hear that standing ovation when my name was called, man, I, I, I'm, as you can see, I'm lost for words. Uh, it's just a tremendous honor and, you know, it's just a special feeling, something that I'll never be able to explain. And with that, the chapter closed on the Riders' tenure at Taylor Field. Before a sold-out crowd on October 29th, players got a chance to say goodbye to the only home the Green and White have ever known. Despite showing its agent being in desperate need of repair, fans from across the league have travelled to what many consider the heart of the CFL. The final game was a rather dismal affair as the Lions won 24-6. That didn't matter to fans who stayed well after the clock struck zero to enjoy their final mosaic moments. She was a sweetheart. She was that... You could be having the worst day possible and she would just look up at you and smile and everything was better. It was just a better day. Less than 12 hours after issuing an Amber Alert for missing 7-year-old Nia Eastman, RCMP called it off when the little girl was found dead. Nia's father, Adam J. Eastman, had failed to return the little girl to her mother. The following day, Eastman's body was found near Smeaton. Several hours later, the body of Nia Eastman was discovered in a home in the small community of Choiceland. Nia Eastman's death was a tragic reminder of our province's high rate of domestic violence. We never planned this for this weather, so we're lucky. November brought record-breaking temperatures to several communities across the province. This year, instead of bundling up against the elements, many people were out enjoying summer-like conditions. One weekend alone saw temperatures topping 20 degrees. Oh God, well why should you get paid for something you love to do? Mm -hmm. You know, gee, it looks like so much fun and it's one of the hardest jobs I think anyone could ever do. A founding member of Saskatoon's Persephone Theatre, Janet Wright, was no stranger to people of this province. Best known for her role as Emma Leroy on the hit TV series Corner Gas, Wright was an accomplished and award-winning stage and screen actress. She played a major role in the development of modern professional theatre in Canada. You've lived here your whole life, right? Thanks for cheering me up. Janet Wright died November 14th. She was 71. It's a very emotional time for our organization, obviously. It's um, shocking. It's, it's sad. Um, it's, it's devastating. It, it's, it's senseless. After a disappointing season on the field in 2016, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were dealt another blow off the field. Running back Joe McKnight was shot dead in a New Orleans suburb over a case of apparent road rage. 28-year-old McKnight had only dressed in a few games for the Riders this season, but made an impact in the games he played. McKnight was the second CFL player to be shot and killed this year. From all of us at CBC Saskatchewan, thank you so much for tuning in to share these moments of the place we call home.